Hello students, Assalamu alaikum. As an EFL learners are non-native speakers, uh, it is observed that most of the students, they are, uh, they feel much difficulty in understanding uh, such topics. I have chosen this topic because in my cognitive pedagogical experience, I observed as an EFL learners are non-native speakers, most of the students find this topic very difficult to understand in the beginning. Because there are some certain concepts, theories and approaches which have been presented in different studies our research studies. First of all, the students have no in-depth understanding about grammar. And second thing, they are non-native speakers. Sometimes the sentence structures and the vocabulary found our content in this topic is very hard to understand by a non-native speaker. Apart from this, the concepts of semantic, phonetics and other linguistic uh, categories also uh, create problems in understanding this chapter. So in this topic, word, there are certain discrepancies or certain controversies to agree upon those definitions which have been given in this topic because any definition which has been given suffers from defects or it is not exact because it has been proved by uh, the author that all of them are not up to the mark. My today's lecture is about words taken from the book Grammar by Frank Palmer. It is chapter number two, which begins from page number 41 till 98. The first topic of the chapter 2.1, words. The red text indicates that the topic is under discussion or this has been taken up for the lecture. Page number 41 to 43, it is for today's session, video number one. Let me give you a brief background about the word that the Frank Palmer has uh, tried to seek the definition from different sources. According to the author, word has no proper definition. Although in the writing convention, it is widely used and taught and learned through the system of spellings, punctuations, intonations, etc. Frank Palmer has indicated that there are certain familiar and unfamiliar terms used in writing convention in order to define the word but most of them are not exact. He has given evidence with the proof how a word cannot adhere to the definition which have been presented uh, by other research scholars. So let's begin 
uh, how it starts. Traditional grammars make use of a fairly wide technical vocabulary to describe concept in using words such as nouns, verbs, plural. So to this extent, in our educational settings, most of the students know very well what a verb is, what a noun is, what adjective is. So these are some certain terms, but these terms are linguistically, uh, they are uh, considered to be as a unit of word. So, but they does not offer, uh, I mean, they identify about a word, what a word is in grammatical category, but they do not give any definition itself to the word. Now, Frank Palmer has focused on some familiar and less familiar terms used in traditional grammar to see how they are used. What is the justification of these terms? So, remember, in the coming, uh, you know, pages, we are going to see what terms, what are the familiar and unfamiliar terms. This is, is I mean, this is going to be our focal point. Unfortunately, common practice in grammar is so, uh, is to give some kind of definition of most of the words, but never to question the entire justification of their use. It means commonly grammar is used or word is used as a com common practice in grammar, but no one has raised the question regarding the justification about its use. Next. Here I have uh, tried to give a very brief points about the text. If you would be able to retain some of the points which I have uh, already given about the text, it means you are well prepared for whole text because this is the core of the text. Despite the word is widely used, there is no definition according to the author. Writing shows spaces, but speech is not based on spaces between them. Because we see there are words which are, which are spaced. So the de in writing convention, the spaces or breaks between the words, they are identical of word because they are separated by spaces. But what uh, the author says about this, he says that these are, they are the just, sent, I mean the sentence is a combination of words and the parts of speech are classes of words. But in a single uh, domain, a single, uh, as a single word, there is no definition. In written language, the words are clearly identified by, by spaces between them. So he does not accept that this is a definition. It may be, uh, I mean, you may recognize a word which may be separated from each other in writing convention. But again, he raises the question, what about the speech? I mean, in written communication, uh, sorry, in spoken communication. He raises the question, it is found, the spaces are found in writing convention, but what about speech, which is a spoken communication? Next. Frank Palmer states that our concern is not only writing, but also speech. What is a word in spoken form of communication? This is the question. The author tries to find the answer in three ways. So the word may be seen or it may be used in the form well chosen as a compound word, well chosen without hyphenated because here is a hyphen. It is without hyphen. And this one is also without hyphen, but they are joined together. So he, the author believes that this is a one word, which is the combination of two words. We are not concerned 
only with writing but with speech so there are three points that we should consider what are those three points firstly in his first point frank palmer states that our concern is not only writing but also speech what is a word in spoken form of communication we must not simply project the written word onto the spoken word we must not assume that wherever we have words in writing we must have words in speech it means if a word has a definition that the words are spa you know separated through spaces then what about speech speech cannot be separated the words of speech are not separated by the spaces because this has been proved i am going to let you know in his next uh text secondly there are no spaces between words in speech some grammarians have made this mistake so what he says actually as a brief in second point frank palmer gave some evidence from the research studies of phoneticians the experts of phonetics and phonology and their mechanical and electronic experiments proved that there are no spaces or breaks between the word between words in speech so this has been proved so this is the reason that the author does not uh believe or he rejects the idea that speech is also uh have some words because there are no spaces or breaks in speech which has been experimented through electronic and mechanical uh device uh, applied uh, to catch the sound by different experts in the field of uh phonetics and phonology there are no spaces or breaks between words in speech except that they appear in phrases clauses and sentences listening an unfamiliar language makes the listener quite impossible to divide up the speech into stretches except marked by pauses and intonation because when the experiment was conducted it did not show any space or break between the words by the speakers even some of the language which we are unfamiliar with in those when recording uh the experiments of electronic devices they did not indicate any break except low or high indication of stretches of sound but the stretches of sound were based upon not on the words but they were based upon uh, the phrases clauses and sentences next in the third point frank palmer states that the words of written language are not on the academic i mean they are not only used as an acad you know accepted or recognized standard in the world of academia so they show the words show some linguistic justification which are divided under principles let me clear this third point because in academia or in writing convention we study language and particularly word from spelling system pronunciation system some linguistic system so using nouns phrases and then uh, some certain inflections which are associated with the word like write writing wrote written and uh, similarly accept acceptance acceptable accept acceptability and all these type of so they these are some of the grammatical categories the word is converted into different grammatical categories adjective adverb noun verb all of this and there are some certain 
phrases them. So by this way, a word may be used as a linguistic unit. So in the third point that he wants. So they are more likely to correspond some kind of linguistically justified units. Because when we learn grammar, so the grammatical categories of the words are different. And when we learn grammar through the parts of speech, then there are the classes of the words which are used. So similarly, uh, this is the third, you know, approach or third way we try to understand what a word is so that we might very well known to the phenomena of language, any language and particularly English language. Next. Third point continues. It is difficult to see linguistic realities in such linguistic areas about which we are interested to describe the language. What is difficult? The reality. Because in all the concepts and familiar or unfamiliar terms found in different studies which have been undertaken in different settings in the world, it has been uh, analyzed by uh, Frank Palmer, but finally he finds it very difficult linguistically. There are no realities. There is no single word about it that can be described in the language. So there is an evidence that the word has, nat has no natural entity because, uh, because use of spaces in words is the common, uh, sorry, Roman tradition. First time, the spaces were given or the words are separated, uh, separated through spaces, it is the convention or it is the tradition of Roman. So, but Greek does not have because their words are continuous, they are joined together, they run in a parallel way. So, Greek used no spaces. Despite of this, the concept of words existed in the language such as Greek philosophers, Plato. His work is uh, Cratylus, is about language based on items that are words. Because the Plato's work, uh, Cratylus, it shows no spaces in his writing between the words. But those words, according to Frank Palmer, they are items which function as words. So this is what is said. The word is not a natural linguistic entity and the use of spaces to indicate word division belongs to Roman times and the Greek did not use spaces. Again, we have to ask ourselves, so what is a word and how can it be defined? This is a major question. So first of all, the first is to see the word as a semantic unit, a unit of meaning. So we are going to uh, study further about how a word semantically described and defined. And then second, sees it as, as a phonetic or phonolog phonological unit. So then we are going to see from the phonetic point of view, the spaces. And then the third attempt is to establish the word by variety of linguistic procedures, as has been indicated previously, that the word is also a linguistic unit. So linguistic unit is described through the certain principles through which grammar is taught. Our different grammatical category of words are taught. So inshallah in the next session, I am going to explain in detail and try to find whether we succeeded uh, or the author succeeded in finding an exact definition of the word word. Uh, thank you very much.